Unit 1, Income Tax Gross Income, Lecture 4, Gross Income Specific Inclusions. Gross Income Specific Inclusions. The Income Tax Act gives reference to certain amounts that have to be included as gross income, even though some of these amounts are regarded as capital in nature. Below is a list of the general amounts that have to be specifically included under gross income. We will be looking at some of these items in detail. The first one of these items that we will be looking at is annuities. Any amount that constitutes an annuity must be specifically included in a taxpayer's gross income in terms of paragraph A. An annuity is defined as any amount payable on an annual basis of which the payments are repetitive and which is charged against a person. The income of a living annuity is also classified as an annuity. The next item is payments in respect of services rendered. Any payment in respect of services rendered also has to be specifically included as gross income under paragraph C. The definition of services rendered is basically any amount received which is linked to services rendered by the taxpayer, even though it does not form part of their everyday employment. Examples of such payments may include any of the following, a pension or retirement allowance received by an ex-employee, a salary received in terms of leave, a salary received after giving notice at employment, any prizes won, as well as any third party payments. Restraint of trade payments. Even though the amount is capital in nature, any restraint of trade payments still has to be included in a taxpayer's gross income. The reason for this is because it is still an employer-employee relationship and the funds received are effectively freezing the income earning structure of a taxpayer. In terms of taxation purposes, the person receiving the payment has to specifically include it in gross income, whereas the person paying such an amount is also entitled to a tax deduction. Lump sums from termination of employment. According to paragraph D, any lump sum received with regards to termination of employment also has to be specifically included in a taxpayer's gross income. Should such a lump sum become payable after the taxpayer's death, they are deemed to have received funds immediately before death. Some examples are payments for loss of employment, loss of office, accumulated leave pay, and a retrenchment payment. Lump sums from pension, provident and retirement annuity funds. Any funds received from pension, provident or retirement annuity funds have to be specifically included in a taxpayer's gross income according to paragraph E. Whereas paragraph A relates to the inclusion of annuities, paragraph E relates to any lump sums received.